Hello again. So I know I'm a little bit late with the video, but better late than never. So uh, I told you guys that I would be talking about kind of everyday topics throughout the year, uh, but we'd be discussing them through an economic lens. And so with that in mind today, we are going to be talking about New Year's resolutions. Yay! And I'm apparently already failing at mine because <laughs> one of mine was to, uh, you know, keep up on doing my videos a little bit more consistently but I'm not going to give up. So anyway, so let's get into it. All right, New Year's resolutions. Everybody knows what they are. Either you've made them, you've broken them, you've kept them, you've forgotten about them, whatever. You've had interactions with them at some point, right? So we're not gonna be talking about all the different kinds of New Year's resolutions. We're actually only gonna be talking about one in particular. Now there are two topics that uh, always make the list for most Americans without fail every year. The first topic is finances. Uh, so whether it's to make more money, uh, to, you know, budget better, to um, spend less, or to, you know, uh, get their 401k going, something to that effect, uh, they, you know, people are are dealing with uh, personal finances on their New Year's resolution list. The second one without fail is health related. So like living a healthier lifestyle, whether it's going to the gym, uh, you know, go eat healthier, maybe get more sleep, try to lose X amount of weight, whatever that might be. It, it's something to that effect. Those two hit the list every year for most Americans without fail. So today we're only going to be discussing one of them. Now, you would think finances, but you would be wrong because we talk about finances all the time on the channel. So we're actually gonna go with the health style one, uh, the, life, the healthier lifestyle one. So why is this important and how does it even, you know, apply economically? You would be surprised. Everything uh, is impacted uh, and everything impacts the US economy. So. Let's talk about that. How does this happen? So again, uh, whether it's like going to the gym, going to um, sleep more, trying to uh, eat healthier, you'd be surprised. All of this has big, big impacts on the US economy. So the biggest one, let's start off with the biggest one, which is the cost of an unhealthy lifestyle uh, in the US. So. The CDC uh, had done a study, and this was back in 2009 that was published. On an annual basis, annual, mind you, every year, the United States spends $147 billion, that's billion with a B, uh, billion dollars on healthcare that is directly tied to obesity. Now, that is a lot of money. But it also makes sense that we would spend that much because we are the fattest nation in the world. We are incredibly unhealthy here. Uh, you know, we have very sedentary jobs. We uh, eat a lot of junk food, processed food because it's quick and convenient. And these actually have big impacts in the US economy. And we'll go into some of that more later. But let's talk about the healthcare costs. So that is a lot of money. Uh, and we're, you know, paying for this through lots of different ways, whether it's uh, actual monetary costs, time cost. I mean, there's resource costs, you name it, we're paying for it. So obviously monetary costs, that's, that's the obvious one, but I mean, even resources. So you're talking about that there's a massive amount of healthcare consumption on just like obesity related uh, cases. And that means that all the healthcare professionals are focusing more on that and they're not able to focus on other areas of, of health that also need, that also require attention because it's being so consumed by uh, uh, obesity. And, and so that actually has a, you know, has a cost on the uh, healthcare industry as well as the US economy. On top of that, we actually have a loss of productivity uh, when people are unhealthy because if they're not well, um, you know, then they're they're not gonna uh, 
they're going to get sick more easily. Um, they'll call in sick more often. And so that's a loss of productivity in the U.S. economy. Now, these are things that people don't think about, but it all starts adding up. I mean, these are big costs uh, that start adding up when you're talking about not just one person, but you're talking the whole U.S. country, which is like 200 or 327 million people. So this starts adding up and this is happening every year. This isn't just happening once and then stopping. It's happening every year. So, so this is why it's, this is the topic I decided to uh, focus on as opposed to finance, because there's a lot of, uh, like I said, economic ties to this that people don't think about. Now, on the flip side of that, um, the positives of making New Year's resolutions that are based on, you know, a healthier lifestyle is that it actually uh, requires, I'm sorry, causes uh, the demand for foods to shift their trends. And so then the suppliers, uh, the manufacturers have to start meeting that demand if they want to capture some of that market share and make some extra profit. So when people make this change and they are, you know, making a resolution or a goal to eat healthier, then they're going to start eating different types of foods. And, and then again, that start, that demand starts to show, uh, in, in all the different trends and the manufacturers. And of course, uh, the, uh, food corporations, of course, all take note farmers, uh, you know, again, food manufacturers, they all take note of the different shifting trends and, and then they're going to, um, you know, try to market towards that market share that creates new divisions, new jobs. Uh, so it actually, it again, has an impact on top of that. Of course, every year gyms across the nation, uh, have a huge increase in, um, in membership, so the increase in uh, money exchange uh, during those transactions, people taking the time to uh, go into the gyms, um, that's, these are all good things. The healthier that we get as a nation, the less cost it is actually to us as a nation. Uh, and so these are good goals to have. And there's some, some interesting numbers between, uh, behind some of this with new year's resolutions that are weight related or rather health related, not weight related. Um, and so one being that, uh, oddly enough, if, if you set a new year's resolution, um, and these, these numbers kind of vary depending on the different studies and where the, you know, where the source comes from, where they pull the data. But on average, about middle of January is where people start quitting. Now, if you get past that point, uh, then you are, you are ahead of the curve. You are doing much better uh, than, than um, the first two weeks. So a lot of people do tend to stop at the first two weeks, uh, which is unfortunate, especially when you're talking about your health. Um, but, but if you can keep going beyond that, you'll actually... Um, you're more likely to succeed for the whole year. So if you can push to the six month mark um, and you get to that point, you are then at that point, um, statistically, you're gonna make it all the way to the end of the year. So that's good, that's good. If you've made it to this point, keep going, keep going, don't quit. Um, but on top of that, part of the reason that the failure rate seems to um, be so early on is because the goals are either not well defined or they're too lofty or you have too many of them. Now that's one that the last one is the one that a lot of people get into a trap of, um, where they set like so many goals that they're, that, and they're trying to hit all of them that they get frustrated because you can't hit that many goals all at once. Um, and so one of the ways to improve on your likelihood of success is to limit the amount of goals you have. Really, you should not have more than anywhere from one to, I would say three. Um, I think that's more than plenty because you're trying to keep this going for the whole, the whole year. If you set like 10 goals, that's a lot. That's for most people they are going to quit because they're going to feel too overwhelmed. Um, on top of that, like I said, you know, sometimes it's not well defined. They don't really have an action plan. They're just like, I'm going to eat healthier. Well, what does that mean? Um, so, you know, actually like 
set a plan, set a goal and really detail it out as to how you're going to achieve that goal. Because if it's not detailed out, you're not going to really go for it. And so these again are kind of ideas that people don't think about when they're talking about their health and how it impacts the U.S. economy, but it does impact the U.S. economy in a big way. One of the reasons that you see a big push for uh, more uh, healthier options um, at restaurants, either at local restaurants or big chains, is because that demand has uh, has shifted, like I discussed before, when people start making these different demands and they're changing their lifestyles, you actually see that playing out in the U.S. economy. And so it's created new jobs. I mean, tons of, I don't know, uh, you know, I can't speak for the whole nation, but at least where I live, there's been a ton of new restaurants that have opened over the last decade. Um, and a lot of them are trying to go more with the healthier options. And so you can see that it can start making an impact in the U.S. economy. Those are new jobs that are being created when new restaurants are being opened. That's, uh, you know, new employees are being added onto uh, staff. Uh, it's, you know, generating revenue, tax revenue for the city um, and for the state, for the federal government. Like this all has impacts. And so... So keep up with your goals and, you know, try to be healthier. Again, it's never going to be a bad thing um, to work towards that. And it benefits, it benefits everybody, not just you. It benefits the world, you know. Uh, so, um, so keep up with it. So that's, that's what I wanted to discuss with you guys about today, as far as New Year's resolutions. And again, kind of just seeing it from a different lens, uh, through the economic lens of how it, you know, can actually affect uh, the U.S. economy and and the functions of of uh, kind of supply and demand. You you see that, and uh, whether you notice it or not, now you're going to see it. Now you're going to start noticing it everywhere. So, uh, so if you do that, then my goal has been has been uh, achieved. All right. So really quick economic update. Uh, the last about week, um, the coronavirus has dominated the airwaves. Um, so how does this impact economically, right? How does this even impact the market? Because yesterday the market flipped out. It had a huge uh, downtick because of the coronavirus being, uh, being spread out throughout the world already. We had five confirmed cases in the US. Uh, you had some um, in other parts of the world. And of course, uh, trying to, you know, basically quarantine multiple country or multiple cities, trying to contain this. So why did the markets freak out? Well, how does this impact us economically? Well, if you're talking about the fact that these people that are quarantined can't go do their jobs. Now the manufacturing has a shortage of workers. Okay. That's going to be a strain on the goods that get produced. On top of that, um, to contain the virus, they're trying to limit movement, which means like flights, shipping, anything where it's coming out of China, they're going to try to limit a lot of stuff. That puts a big halt on trade and on business in general. And so this is how it can impact, uh, you know, it can impact the global economy having this having this uh, outbreak in China. So that's how, this is why it's affecting the markets. That's why they freaked out. Um, right now, it seems to be more getting contained and under control. If they continue at this rate of uh, containment, then it shouldn't be a problem. If, however, it continues to spread at the rate it's been spreading and we can't contain it, then you are definitely going to see a bigger impact being made on the markets and uh, on the U.S. economy and China's economy as well. And so, um, so I hope that helps to uh, helps to clarify why this is a, you know, an issue to uh, actually uh, look at and pay attention to. And so. Uh, Markets hit new record highs, of course. They continue to do well. Um, and again, at this point, we're not seeing anything as far as the indicators are concerned to cause any alarm. 
Um, the Federal Reserve will be meeting soon and we'll be discussing, uh, you know, uh, their, uh, their notes. So uh, until then, you guys have a good day. If you have any questions, let me know. Put them in the comments section. Uh, put the comments or questions in the comments section below and I will talk with you guys later.